Hey, have you been watching the Supreme Court confirmation hearings for Katanji Brown Jackson? No, I couldn't bring myself to. The whole process is just a fuss. Tell me about it. Could you believe that she didn't know how to define woman? How stupid can you be? Wait a minute. I did see that part, and you can't seriously believe that. That question was asked by Marsha Blackburn, and it was pure theater. It had nothing to do with being on the Supreme Court. It was meant to score culture war points with Blackburn's base, which she clearly believes is transphobic. Besides, Brown Jackson didn't even say she didn't know how to. She said that she couldn't provide a definition. But that's just being pedantic. What does that mean other than that she didn't know it how means to she do wasn't it? the relevant person to provide a definition. It's totally typical, understandable evasiveness. I do disagree with something she implied, though. She said, I'm not a biologist. The implication being that biologists are the relevant kind of person to provide the definition. And I don't think that's true. But anyone should be able to provide a definition. Anyone who isn't brain dead knows how to use the word woman, don't they? And by not providing one, she gave the right-wing media even more of a victory. They had a great time with little infographics about female biology and stuff. And if you say she does know what one is, why didn't she just give a definition? By all means, let's us two dudes settle who gets to be a woman. But okay, if anyone can give a definition, then why don't you do it? How about not a man? Pretty simple. Huh. So, when girls get given the talk about hitting puberty and becoming women, they must have been men before? Because how can they become women if the only other option is being a man? Fine. Every adult human that is not a man. Happy now? I'm going to keep track of how many attempted definitions you give for the word that's so simple to define. We're on number two. One thing to point out already is that your definition is useless unless we have already defined man. And either your definition of man is not a woman, in which case your definitions are circular and no help to anyone, or you can define man in terms of the properties of men, in which case why not do that for women rather than making them just somehow failed men? Whatever. All right, how about this? A woman is an adult human with a vagina. Okay, that's interesting. So you have the kind of 50s attitude that what we call now gender reassignment surgery is literally a sex change, as they used to call it. Nowadays, they're very good at surgically constructing vaginas. When they do that, they're literally changing someone from a man to a woman, at least by your current definition, which is number three. However, even though it's pretty old fashioned, I'm fairly sure Martha Blackburn wouldn't agree with you on that one. You know what I mean. She had to have been born with a vagina. Huh. So, what you are as an adult is determined by what you were when you were born? Okay, well imagine this. Somebody washes up on the beach, alive, but with complete amnesia. This person has a vagina, but doesn't even know, they know if they were a boy or a girl when they were younger. Does this mean we don't know whether or not this person is a woman? And don't say you could tell if the vagina was artificial or not. Let's say this is in the future and they perfected the surgery. So it's literally impossible to tell. You can make anything complicated. Okay, what about this? They can't do artificial uteruses yet, can they? Let's say a woman is an adult human with a uterus. Happy now? Well, I guess I just discovered that my mother isn't a woman, at least since she had her hysterectomy. I better let her know. It might be a bit of a shock. That was definition number five, by the way. You're just being willfully obtuse. I mean, has a uterus or had one until it was removed. And don't give me any amnesiacs on the beach crap this time. You can certainly tell if somebody's had a hysterectomy. Let's say you're right about that. But here's where the biologists that Judge Brown Jackson were talking about might come in handy. Have you heard of AIS? Automatic Identification System? Isn't it a tracking system on boats? Uh, maybe, but I was talking about androgen insensitivity syndrome, specifically complete AIS, C-A-I-S. It's a condition where, and one of its effects is that some people with it develop all outward appearances of being female, including a vagina and after puberty breasts, but they never had a uterus. Most of them don't even know they have C-A-I-S until some time into puberty when they start wondering why they don't menstruate. CAIS isn't particularly common, but there are no doubt many thousands of people with it. Are you saying these people who've grown up female and regard themselves and are regarded by others because of their external sexual characteristics as women are in fact not women? I mean, they're not men, are they? I guess not. So 
Are you prepared to give up on sex binaries? Do you want to say, as the biologist Anne Fausto Sterling, who studies intersex conditions, once suggested, that there are at least five sexes? That's ridiculous. Well then, you've got a problem. There are people born without uteruses that you think are women, and I'm willing to bet that in the not too distant future there will be people born with penises who can get a uterus transplant, and I'm pretty sure the Marsha Blackburn crowd won't want to call them women. Okay, so let's ignore the uterus. Let's get down to the chromosomes. We all know that you're either XX or XY, right? So now my definition is that a woman is an adult human who is XX. Bad news. First of all, there are more than just XX and XY. So right there, if you're going by chromosomes, there are, for example, Turner syndrome, or XO, and Kleinfelter syndrome, or XXY. Also, there are cases where it's legitimately borderline whether the chromosomes are XX or XY. And finally, there are people who have a mosaic. They can have XX in some cells and XY in others. Also, remember CAIS. Those individuals are XY, or male, on your definition. They're called androgen insensitive because fetuses are identical at least up to eight weeks, and the typical XY starts developing male characteristics when exposed to androgen in the womb. But the androgen doesn't have that effect if you're AIS. People with CAIS have undescended testicles as their gonads rather than ovaries. In fact, there was a case of a female Spanish hurdler who was going to compete for her country in the 1985 World University Games, who was barred from competing at the very last limit because she failed a sex test. She was CAS and therefore XY without knowing it. But look, it's got to be simple. I mean, the biological point of sex is reproduction, right? And you need a male and a female for that. So the vast majority of people are either 100% male or 100% female. All of this stuff you're bringing up is just a tiny minority. Depends. First, let's point out that you're now talking about female, which is not the same as woman. And as for reproduction, every single human goes through periods in our lives when we're incapable of reproduction. Childhood, obviously, but also old age, certainly for women. But that doesn't mean we don't have a sex, do we? And that's even if you're just using sex as a biologist might. And if you're doing that, well, then it's a lot broader than XX and XY because a huge number of animals are designated as having sexes. And plants too, so no biologist is going to say you have to have certain chromosomes to be female or male. Forget the other animals and the plants, I'm talking about humans. Yes, I know children can't reproduce, but that doesn't alter the fact that our biology is set up a certain way to ensure we can reproduce, and nature sorts us into two different groups for that purpose. And if you're sorted into the female group, that's what you are. But why should we let biology define us? I know the conservatives like to say they're the ones who are following the facts and science, though it's funny how quickly they forget this when we're talking about climate change and evolution. But do you really want to make it a requirement of being a woman that you be able to have babies? CAIS may be quite rare, but infertility certainly isn't. I mean, you seem to think that nature gets to decide our identities, but what if our real function from nature's point of view is to provide food for worms? Now you're being ridiculous. If nature doesn't get to settle the issue of who's a woman and who's a man, what does? How about the people who are being labeled? That argument about nature deciding has a pretty ugly history. Aristotle said that there were natural slaves because some people were born without the ability to take care of themselves. So, according to him, that means they were meant to be under someone else's control. And no surprise conservatives like the nature argument because it's been used to deny women the vote because they're too excitable or too hormonal. So you really believe anyone who wants to call themselves a woman should get to do so. Maybe I want to identify as a woman today, but hey, just for this morning when I'm competing in a woman's wrestling competition and using the woman's bathroom, I think I'll be male again in time for dinner. Ah, uh, yes. I wondered when bathrooms and women's sports would enter the conversation. Amazing how conservatives, exactly the people who are most opposed to Title IX and famously mocking of things like their WNBA, are suddenly presenting themselves as crusaders for fairness in women's sports. And what's with the bathroom obsession? You know there have been unisex bathrooms forever, right? You're ignoring my question. 
Should people get to change their designated sex anytime they want? If it's unconnected with biology, what's stopping that? Look, I'm not transgender, so I don't think I should be the one to decide this issue. But the only people I've heard talking about changing their sex on a whim are transphobes. The assumption seems to be that trans people are just messing around, faking somehow, and this is all some big con. But why on earth would you believe that? But anyway, it wasn't me who said that defining woman was easy. That was you, seven failed definitions ago. So are you seriously saying that the word woman doesn't have a meaning, or at least that nobody knows what it is? Well, it depends on the context, doesn't it? If one of my 80-year-old parents is using the term, I'm pretty sure I know what they mean. But there's a difference between a word being a perfectly fine means of communication in most circumstances and a word being suitable for the kind of precise definition you want, particularly in legal contexts where precision is essential. That's a perfectly legitimate reason for someone like Judge Brown Jackson to bulk at being asked to provide one. And I'm suspicious of people trying to give some kind of precise definition. Those are gatekeepers, people who want to weaponize it against already marginalized groups. The right likes to make fun of using terms like person who menstruates instead of woman, but depending on the context, like providing free tampons or whatever, there are perfectly good reasons to do so. And anyone pretending we're losing something by not using woman in those circumstances needs to get a life.